Let's get all of Raft's achievements. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. Now that the game has exited early access and is in its first full release edition, it's time to crank out all 104 of Raft's achievements. In this video, we'll be covering every single achievement and how you can get it in your own world from surviving for just one day through all 19 hidden achievements. To make everything a bit cleaner and easier to understand, I've broken up the achievements into a few sections, which should also make it easier to avoid spoilers. So we're going to start with all of the achievements that don't require you progressing through the story at all, and then handle things from there. If you find this guide helpful or just enjoy the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, it would be much appreciated. But without further ado, let's get into every achievement in Raft. Obviously, Raft is a survival game, so it shouldn't surprise you that there are several achievements tied to staying alive. Also note that a lot of Raft's achievements are tiered, meaning that there are often a few achievements for doing certain amounts of the same thing over and over again. In this instance, that's surviving for multiple days. So the very first achievement you'll likely get is Beginner Survivor for making it through your first day. And then there are three more for surviving 7 days, 30 days, and eventually 365 days. These are just time-based, so enjoy your playthrough and you'll get there eventually. The rest of the grindy survival achievements can be done throughout multiple worlds, so you don't need to do it all in one save, including stuff like the gatherer achievements for hooking in items. These come in three tiers of hooking 100 items, 500 items, and 5000 items. It's just a grind, but it's pretty simple to pull off all of these. Same situation with the three builder achievements for placing 10 foundations, 100 foundations, and 1000 foundations, and the painting achievement for 50, 200, and 1000 blocks respectively is also a bit obnoxious, but they are achievements nonetheless. After these basic grindy achievements, you'll probably want to find yourself a large island, which is in itself the Large Land Mass Ahoy achievement, but more because large islands are necessary to complete a lot of other achievements, including, but not limited to, another series of achievements dedicated to capturing animals. Of course, you'll need the net launcher and tons of net canisters to do this, so prepare accordingly. Anyways, you'll need to capture 1, 10, and 50 animals to unlock the Wrangler series of achievements, with a bonus achievement of Some Look Different for capturing a rare animal. Rare animals are basically any animal without the basic variety of skin, which is the solid brown goat, the solid brown llama, and the blue chicken. Every other animal variety is a rare animal that will unlock the achievement once captured. While at the large island, you can also take advantage of your local trading posts to unlock the three trading post achievements for purchasing one item and unlocking tiers 2 and 3. If you're confused about how to use trading posts and advance in tiers, I've already made a guide to understanding the trading posts, so I would recommend checking out that video for help. The rest of the survival achievements are kind of miscellaneous. You'll get achievements for crafting and placing a simple grill and purifier, which you'll need to survive anyways. Then there's an achievement for having the stationary anchor, the one with the wooden supports, and a sail placed on the same raft for the II captain achievement. And there's even two achievements for having 20 storages and crop plots on your raft to unlock the hoarder and the farmer achievements. There's also two achievements tied to cooking and eating food. The first is the A More Complex Concoction achievement for cooking a recipe in a cooking pot, which you can find those recipes in loot crates around islands if you need them. And then there's the Powered Up achievement for having all of the food and juice buffs active at once. The only recipes that provide buffs are the ones from the trading posts, so once you buy all of those and then craft them in the juicer and the cooking pot respectively, if you consume all of them at once, you can unlock this achievement. And the last spoiler-free achievement is for the Team Play achievement, where you play with at least one other human on your raft. If you need to find someone to help you get this achievement, you could always join my Discord and ask in the Buddy System tab. Also, be sure to check out Nick, she's pretty cool. The next big category of achievements we're going to cover is dedicated to decimating all of Raft's wildlife. Again, all of this can be done without accessing any story locations, and we'll revisit a mini version of this segment after we go through the story stuff later. This group of achievements is centered on a ton of hunter unlocks, for which you generally need to kill at least one of an animal for beginner, 10 for intermediate, and 50 for expert. The animals you'll be taking care of are the shark, of course, which you can do pretty easily by throwing a shark bite right next to your raft and then whacking Jeremiah when he comes in to eat, and the pesky seagulls, which I highly recommend throwing rocks at because it's funny. The rest of the animals are found at large islands, so you'll have to do plenty of island hopping to kill a ton of poison puffers with a bow and arrow, and somehow kill a ton of warthogs before they kill you, and even survive the pure rage that comes with murdering 50 screechers. But that's all of the beginner-friendly achievements. From here on out, you'll need to progress through the story to unlock the majority of the remaining achievements, so beware spoilers ahead. 
There's one achievement for every story location to find all of the notes, and that's a long and intensive process that I've already covered in another video if you need help finding whatever notes you're missing. Similarly, I have a separate video dedicated to all of the blueprints and unlockable characters if you're looking for the All Aboard achievement. But anyways, let's move on to all of the non-hidden story achievements, starting with the Bootleg Fireworks achievement. For this, you'll need to have found the second story location, which is a massive cruise ship. Once you've gathered up the bullet, the electrical wire, the lighter, and the gas canister, you can craft an explosive device in the basement and use it to open the bridge of the ship, earning you the achievement. Then there are two special achievements for Balboa Island, which is the location immediately after the cruise ship. The first is Fix Arrow, which you can get by retrieving the light bulb from the Circle of Creepy Kids, which we'll cover a bit more in depth later. Once you have your light bulb, go to the ranger station and interact with the weird doll outside of the door to screw back in Arrow's head and earn the achievement. The other Balboa achievement requires you to manage to slay the mama bear, which is honestly easiest if you cheese it by standing in this corner and shooting her with approximately a gazillion arrows to unlock the mother load achievement. Next is the Cache Collector achievement for Varuna Point, where you'll need to find all of the grabber's little stashes hidden throughout the buildings. The first is in the first room on the left behind the small jelly hole, and the next one is below that opening underneath the platform with the construction vehicle. If you swim across the way, you'll find one more chest hidden along the right side of the other building, and one more on the next floor down in the far corner hidden in an upturned dumpster. Then just progress through the grabber's secret area and of course grab the stuff hidden at the mother load. Then we have the That's Not a Boat achievement for driving a snowmobile into the ocean. This one is pretty self-explanatory, just grab one of the snowmobiles from any one of the metal domes in Temperance and drive it off the edge into a watery abyss. The other three visible story achievements are for the three increments of buying things at vending machines with tokens. Tokens can be used and found at Tangaroa, Temperance, and Utopia, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to pick up some cool stuff and get more than enough tokens to meet the highest achievement tier in even a single playthrough. Or you could just buy like 30 mugs, which is definitely what I would recommend. While you're visiting all of these story locations, there's another round of animals that you'll need to handle in various increments, usually up to 50 of the same animal again. These are the Larkers, which you can find at the Vasagatan, Tangaroa, and Veruna Point, Bears, which you can find at Balboa and Temperance, Butler Bots, which are the little robots roaming around Tangaroa, and the Anglerfish at both Veruna Point and Temperance. After you've completed the story, there are a few other raft and survival achievements you can work towards, like the Bookworm Achievement for researching everything in the research table. That includes all of the blueprints, so make sure you've collected all of those as well. There are the four achievements tied to ziplining, namely you'll need to travel a total of 1500 meters with a zipline tool, and then 50 meters on a zipline at once, meaning you can't jump off halfway through. I found that the easiest way to farm this achievement is by building your 50 meter long zipline across your raft, and then using the advanced zipline tool that you unlock at Utopia to just go back and forth until you reach the distance that you need. While exploring islands, you'll need to dig up a total of 50 treasures using the metal detector that you unlock to Caravan Town and a shovel. And if you stumble across either evergreen or desert islands, you should work on catching 25 bees. This means 25 bee clusters and not 25 jars of bees, just so we're clear. And then you can turn your abundance of bees into some beehives to place on your raft for the beekeeper achievement for having 10 beehives placed on your raft. The other two random late game achievements are for witnessing 50 fireworks explosions with the fireworks that you unlock at Caravan Town, and those can be pretty satisfying to spam or kill seagulls with, and also for having 30 pipes placed, which is pretty simple if you have a sizable raft or just like placing pipes. And now we get to the stuff you've all been waiting for, the hidden achievements. The first one is the Exploring the Depths achievement for swimming down 100 meters. If you reach Varuna Point, you have to unlock this to complete the Rhino Shark fight, so no issues here. Just bring some fins and an oxygen bottle and you're good to go. The This Goes Here achievement is for breaking or picking up 100 blocks, so you could just pick up and break a ton of stuff if you really want to grind this one. Kind of like how the achievement is entitled The Renovator, that means you have to open at least 66 decoration packages to unlock all of the decoration items that were added for the renovation update. The Oh Captain My Captain and Not A Great Landing achievements are unlocked for finding the boat and plane crash islands respectively, which are the rarest islands in the game with only a 2% chance of spawning when a new small island is loaded in. You can identify them pretty easily by their unique shape and either a visible plane from a distance or the boat crash island's large help flag. Be sure to pick up the fancy hats too, not because you need them for the achievements, but because they're cool. Next is the Ocean Cemetery achievement for dying 25 times, which I've achieved more than 75 times. 
Otherwise, you'll need to start visiting a lot of islands and start digging up even more treasure than you thought you would need to get the Expert Treasure Hunter achievement, because Raph's two most annoying achievements come from digging up the four unique tiki pieces, which have a 7.5% chance of appearing when you dig up a treasure spot, and once you've retrieved all four pieces, they need to be stacked in a particular order, with the grinning mask on the bottom, the tongue out guy next, the angry yellow dude with the bottom teeth in third, and the blue shark guy with the top teeth on top of the pillar. Once that's done, you'll get the former glory achievement, but don't worry, you're still not done with treasure hunting. Both the briefcases and the safes that you'll dig up through treasure hunting have a small percent chance of dropping some developer paintings. After digging up all eight unique paintings, hang them on your rough walls to assert your dominance and receive the artistic collection achievement. While you're in the mood for some interior decoration, be sure to hit a few keys on the piano that you can pick up from Tangaroa's vending machine to unlock the instrumentalist achievement. Next is the tiny little murderer achievement for retrieving Errol's head from the mini children's cult. You can find the area with the spooky little children by following the hill up from the south beach, going past the mama bear cave, and following the next path up the hill on the left. Then just interact with the light bulb to unlock the achievement, and that's also the light bulb that you need to get the Fix Errol achievement that we talked about earlier. Finally, on Balboa, you'll need to collect the saw from the locker near Bobby's Maze, at the bottom of the hill between the bridge and the cave towers. You'll need to grab the wrench from inside the cave relay tower, and the hammer from inside the bridge relay tower. Once you have all of the tools, place them in their respective places on the corkboard inside the ranger station to unveil a postcard, giving you the A Revelation achievement. The next three achievements are for Tangaroa. The first of them is the Boxed In achievement for accessing the hidden room behind the box puzzle with the crane. Simply organize a trail of boxes so that a path forms leading to a hole in the solid wood crates directly underneath where the crane controls are. Then follow your path to get the achievement and some nice loot as well. Next, you'll need to complete the plantation puzzle and gather at least 9 extra tape from the apartments above to gain access to the main elevator. Once you're inside that elevator, look at the top left corner to find a small hidden button, which will bring you 20 floors down to unlock the You Should Not Be Here achievement. This is also where you get one of the 6 unique cassette tapes too if you're interested in that. Finally, the last Tangaro achievement is for solving the launch code puzzle and sending your bridge flying off in a random direction. From there, make your way towards Varuna Point, where you'll need to defeat the Rhino Shark by making it so frustrated with you that the only way to deal with its emotional frustration is to make it slam its head repeatedly into large concrete pillars that you stuff with dynamite until all of its thoughts stop entirely to unlock the Explosive Force achievement. And finally, then you'll complete the last bits of the story at Utopia to unlock the There Is A Utopia achievement and finish the game along with all of your achievement hunting. And that's how you get all 104 of the achievements currently in Raft. I know that there were some achievements in this guide that could have been paired a little differently, but I opted to group them by achievement type rather than location so that people could avoid spoilers more easily if they chose to. So I hope you understand why some things like the Tiny Little Murderer and Fix Errol achievements were separated. It's just hard to organize all of that information and keep everyone happy, but I still hope this guide was helpful to some of you. Anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.